Holy shit. I didn't want to put that on. Hold on. Here we go. Yeah, hold on. What's up? Welcome, idiots. It's me, and we out here again for another one. Um, I don't know what I wanted to do today. I wanted to do some shit on Roblox, right? Wanted to fuck around, fuck with some people, do some crazy shit. Uh. Fuck me, this song. But, dude, listen. Why am I so br- I'm angelic! Look at that! I'm angelic! What if I move it around here? Holy shit. I'm in- My face is all white! Now, what's popping? What's popping, Reed? God damn. This is it. All right, let's do some, uh, let's do some Roblox. Roblox, it's free. Um, did I need to find a, I need to find a game that I can, uh, that I know for a fact people will like freak out at me with because I want to fuck with people above all else today. Why won't window capture work? There it is. But hey! Let's do some fucking competitive Roblox first. DUDE! Alright, hey, listen, you know what it is. Hey, listen, hey. Uh, where the fuck is the audio? Listen. Listen, dude. Hey, listen, hey. You should watch a movie on stream? I can't. Oh, you wanna know what I should do? You wanna know what I should do? Hold on, that's actually a good idea. I sh let's watch the Hamilton Morris documentaries on stream. Hold on. That's like that's a good idea. Hamilton Morris.
There's no maybe. Alright, um... Where is the... Here it is. Here's one of them. Uh... Should I watch this one? This is where Hamilton Morris goes to fucking Africa. To, uh... Ah, fuck it. Fuck it. Let's watch this shit. Alright. Uh, Hamilton Morris goes to Africa, gets some HIV medications. Uh, let me hop underneath just chatting. Hamilton Morris Night. Update. This is it. Alright, dude. There he is. Let's let's just fucking watch this together, right? Chat and me. Are you ready? Ready. Okay. Hey, who needs sleep? Drugs. There's a long pre-established history of what the activity is going to be like. That is not the case with efavirens. Really, the only way to crack that kind of a mystery is to take the drug. <coughs> that is what psychopharmacology is. I don't necessarily think it's going to be mind-blowing, but, uh, time will tell. Ooh. There he is, dude! Oh my god. You weren't expecting him to sound like that? Yeah, dude, his voice is really deep. South Africa has one of the planet's most unique drug cultures. Dr. Shriggins. It is a realm where the quaalude still abounds, and heroin has emerged only recently, not in its familiar guise as an intravenously administered powder, but as a component in a mysterious smoking mixture called... Listen to that music, Niobe. dude. A drug that's torn communities apart, made from a volatile cocktail of red poison, heroin, and ARVs. The drug Efavirens was first approved by the FDA in 1998 and has since become a vital component of the antiretroviral drug cocktails that are used to treat HIV internationally. Apparently some people don't go to clinics now to go and get their <laughs> what are you drugs now? <laughs> they are scared they get robbed and those are then Did, uh, added uh... to this concoction as well. Although prescription drug abuse is not uncommon, this was the first I'd heard of an antiretroviral drug being used recreationally, and the suggestion that it behaved like a classical psychedelic further kindled the fires of my obsession. And so I traveled to South Africa to find out what role, if any, Efavirens plays in the Niope cocktail and what effect it might have on the recreational user. Ooh, mysterious. Just like, no one knows what the fuck this drug does, and this guy, Hamilton fucking Morris, is like, Yeah, you know what? Fuck it. Let's go to South Africa. Hey, shoot me up with this shit. I love that. I just fucking love that. Venturing into the town of Soweto, I met with a local group willing to share their expertise on drug acquisition and consumption. They mix... Nyaupe with Daka. You understand what I'm saying? With marijuana. Is yes. this pickhead? Yeah. So it, it might be. They mix Ooh. Up, yes. Then they smoke it. Yes. Yeah. As I entered the den, I could smell the remnants of heroin and methamphetamine and methcathinone <laughs> and methacolone. And he knows what all these things smell like, right? Cannabis. So he like he knows what methamphetamine, methcathinone, <coughs> meth cologne, whatever. <coughs> he knows what all those things smell like, right? And he picks up on that when he walks. I just fucking love that. Like this dude. I don't know. We're currently in the home of Niope users, and we're gonna get a walk <coughs> through the process of how Niope is formulated. We're gonna see all the different components that go into the mixture, and maybe even watch some people ingesting it. This is the home of the parents of the users who've since passed away. The and Mudraker stronghold. <laughs> something of a drug den. Or so I've been told. I'm Hamilton. Yeah. You must educate other Americans. 
is not marijuana, it's marijuana. Marijuana, dude. The feeling you get is nice. You see, drowsy, uh, but uh, others they, they vomit when they smoke me out the first time. A lot of people have been saying that Niope contains some kind of HIV medicine. Like you take red poison, rat and then you take ARV. Rat poison? Yeah. Rat Why would you put rat poison in it? Yeah, I, I reckon it is dangerous. Having a child's photo on the wall and a drug den is like cooking meth under Jesus. I know! I was about to bring that up, but I was like, I don't want to keep pausing it. But, I, dude, I caught that too. I was like, what the fuck? But I think it also has a high or something. <laughs> you personally put the rat poison no, in? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. As soon as you take a first shot, you feel great because the morphine and the strychnine, they are canceling out. And so you're getting the effect from the morphine. But when the morphine wears off... They're smoking rat poison, by the way. I just want to put that out there. They're taking morphine and rat poison and fucking mixing that shit and smoking it. Like the, the, uh, Those products, the, the strychnine is still in your body causing the pain. And it's every four hours that they have to have a shot because the body hurts. Since the 1960s, reports of street drugs laced with the rat poison strychnine have been perpetuated by the popular media. Most of these claims are false. But when I read that an analytical chemist in Durban had detected strychnine in a niope sample, I decided to pay him a visit. Dun, dun, Do you dun. have anything from the analysis or from previous analysis that you could show us? No, we, <laughs> we did that. We had to get permission to do that. We did that stuff. And that data was Yeah. Good. Hamilton's out here like, mm, I want my I wanna snort some fucking rat poison. To these people. I guess just given how dangerous strychnine is, it seems like there'd be a huge potential for killing people, especially That's what I don't get. That's the other thing. I even ask myself, why are these people not dying yet? Because strychnine is the ancient poison. I think it's been used to kill kings and royalty and important statesmen for a long, long time. <laughs> but you did so awkward. Analysis. And I found a strychnine. Yeah. But if you want a fresh analysis, it's possible for me to do it. Now that you've brought up this question and this point about that you don't think that it's there, that the strychnine is there, and I found the strychnine here from these ones, I'm also curious. And for us to run the analysis for you would not take more than a few hours. If I take you now to buy some, are we off camera? Monka W. <laughs> He's worried about the TOS. Under the cover of night, we went to obtain a fresh Niope sample from a recent drug bust. Over here in Durban, they call it sugars because it looks like brown sugar. So they sell it in straws. They take a straw and they put a little amount in it and then you, you twist it. So <laughs> if you buy it now, you're buying it in that straw and it's just it's really a dirty color. This poison has been used to kill kings forever. But I want to know anything about that. <laughs> God damn it. Fresh Niope in hand, we return to the laboratory. Damn, to look, look at the presence of strychnine. God damn. Or efavirins. If you think about it, the sample set that they brought us was just from one dealer. And uh, it just so happens that we know who the single dealer is. And uh, it's a big dealership. So I really find it hard to believe that you could get that large amount of ARVs to be adding to this to get the significant effect of it out of an ARV. <laughs> I screenshotted so that. That's a new meme. This plot here shows you the UV activity. That's it. Yeah. Okay, of the molecules. If it's an ARV, it's going to have decent UV activity. And the only four compounds that have this UV activity are these things. So, clearly, this is just dirty heroin. No strychnine. 
So the shit that they found, there's no fucking rat poison in it. Well, what's the point? Heroin is a very well-covered, well-established drug of abuse, and uh, it's not something I'm particularly interesting in rehashing. But here's the thing, you know, heroin exists all over the world. What I'm interested in specifically is the ARV thing. Even if it's fake or whatever, I just want to understand it. I want to know, is this something... I believe it's not even a hallucinogen. They don't see things, they just become super high. They just become high? Super high. That's what it sounds like to me as well. Like they get really high, really crazy, but it doesn't quite sound like they're tripping to me. And you know, there's tricks, all these dude. stories in the sun that are talking about how people will rape women so that they can get HIV, so they can get the ARVs to smoke, all this stuff. It seems really sensational to me. No, Let's not forget, that is a tabloid newspaper. Yeah. Do you understand? But I won't necessarily say it's lies because there's truth to everything, you know? This is South Africa, man. Dude, how do you think, like, these, like, these South Africans, right? And don't take this the wrong way, right? Take it, take my words for what they mean. These, all these South Africans, right? They have like their own cliques, their own groups. And then this fucking tall, skinny white dude walks in like, Um, hey, can I have some of your drugs for a uh, documentary? It's like, how, how do they, how do you think they fucking react to that? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. That's just something I always think about whenever he goes somewhere. It's like, how do these people react? Right? Blood. In the one where he gets high off of frogs, they react really poorly, but that next blows, to that, you know? they don't really show it. The, yeah. the concrete in information, the mustn't be lies in it. Coupling of sickness with social welfare money in a very resource uh, poor setting is often fertile grounds for these kinds of rumors. In order to gain further insight into the psychoactivity of efavirins, I met with South African anthropologist Isaac Nyhaus. Do you have any idea? Wait, so they take rat poison, HIV medication, and morphine, and they just kind of put it together into a blunt with, like, weed? Why? <laughs> what the fuck? How much of these things are potentially some kind of journalistic or tabloid fabrication or construction. Yeah, these, the, there's always an aura of factuality in these stories. And uh, I think the reason for that is that when uh, people who are HIV positive use afeverance, one of the side effects is extremely bizarre dreams of standing on mountains, of being attacked by animals, of uh, deceased people walking around in their house. Many Africans believe that the answer- Surprise, Hamilton isn't dead. Like, how does this guy have a functioning brain that can deposit serotonin at this point? I know, this dude goes to all these different countries and just fucking gets high off of shit. Like, how is he still alive? I don't get it. How does his brain still work? And season two is coming out in a couple months. He just keeps doing it. Sing you dreams that God would communicate through dreams. And then they see here is a drug that can similarly induce dreams and can create images and so on. So there is a, a kind of a mystical power to this drug. <laughs> I've already spoken with active users, but I wanted to meet with Niopi addicts in recovery to hear their perspective on what the Niopi mixture might contain. It's a concussion of heroin and other substances, your red poison. Chemicals to use to clean the toilets, uh, chemicals they use to clean the dishes in the kitchen. Your family planning tablet. And they are adding family planning tablets to it? Yeah, and they call it Niopi. I don't have AIDS, you see, or HIV and red poison, and I'm not a rat, you see. Those things are not good for me. <laughs> Even my man Hamilton's laughing at that. Dude, like... <laughs> they have rat poison, I'm not a rat. Hamilton's like, oh, no shit. It can induce dreams, can it? Sounds like my next step in lucid dreaming. Oh boy, here we go. A lot of people, they think they're buying heroin, you know, pure heroin, but it never comes pure because, you know, from where it comes from, as it makes its way 
through Africa. You know, they keep adding all this because the volume decreases. So they want to make more profit and they add this stuff. You know, so you might find maybe it's 50% heroin and the rest is, you know, all these added stuff. <coughs> Slowly, it became clear that Niope was a complex mixture containing near infinite combinations of heroin, cannabis, brodifacum, efavirins, emtricitabine, strychnine, tenofovir, and oral contraceptives. Ew. Fucking Paul Skype. Ted Leggett, a UN researcher who studied drug abuse in South Africa since the mid 90s. I got to South Africa in 19. Abuse. Look how Hamilton uses the fucking trackpad on the uh, laptop. In South Africa since the mid 90s. It's so fuck like he uses this part of his finger instead of actually. I don't 90s. know. I got to South Africa in 1995, which was just after the end of apartheid, and there wasn't a lot of heroin around then. The two places it started out, for whatever reason, was in white communities in uh, Pretoria and Cape Town, and it was being dealt primarily by East Africans at that time, the, the primary areas of Pakistan, Iran, and um, uh, where the, the drugs were coming from. Uh, on the question of why heroin wasn't there, well, I mean, you have to keep in mind that it, it wasn't because of the, the borders were impermeable. People moved money and guns and drugs, so it wasn't because you couldn't get it across the border. It was because... Uh, oh, it's a shoe. I got culture. really scared for a second. Culture. I thought I mean, that was something else. that really struck me is when, when heroin started getting into some parts of the black community, they had no context for it at all. They just didn't, they hadn't seen train spotting. They didn't think about these things as... You know, they didn't have this history with it. Back in Soweto, we met with a local man who had been robbed of his money and plates by a gang of Niobe addicts. They just steal anything. <laughs> money, plates, anything that they can lay their hands on. As you can see, this tap uh, was stolen. So that's why the, there is this water. I've replaced it three times. Only the people who, who do this and get money for Nyaopi. Not... Hamilton gives me the vibe of that quirky kid in fifth grade who just learned what pot was and Triple Dog dared some kid to become a drug dealer and decided to one up them and become a drug master. Dude, that's Hamilton's backstory right there. After this one, I want to watch the, uh, because this one's about to end, but after this one, I want to watch the, um, the isolation tanks. Because he gets high on fucking edibles and goes into isolation tanks. It's so fucking funny. It's so cool. It's for no other peoples. This one's good too because he gets high off the Can fucking Niope. Crime, crime, crime. But I've been living in South Africa for, I mean, my entire life. And uh, the first time that I'm being a victim of crime was a few months ago where someone broke into my house and stole my, my video games. That was it. And that's only because of this drug problem that we are having. <laughs> These fucking video games, dude. Food things. They do housebreakings, maybe washing, maybe when people would wash their clothes and put it there, you steal the clothes. You see, that's why these people are mad now. Even if they find you stealing and they know that you are smoking now, but they hit you to kill you, they kill you. Mob justice. They say criminals sometimes smoke these drugs so that they do not have any fear, that they can be fairly ruthless in their crime. Look at this dude. He's we fearless. The clinic where Walking through all these like fucking gangs and shit. Robbery. And we're about to meet with the doctor who's in charge of dispensing the antiretroviral drugs that have been stolen. I'm surprised this dude had games to begin with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. It's weird, but hey, what are you gonna do? In order he is a doctor, so to be used as a component in the mysterious Niope mixture. And last August, uh, two guys came in and then they knocked as if they were patients. And then uh, they were armed. And then the first thing that they said is, where is the medicine cabinet? They wanted the ARVs. <coughs> this. There it's it is. The main ingredient. Ephedrine. 600 milligrams. 
I tried it myself. I was just experimenting. Experimenting? Yeah. And... The doctor tried it himself. I felt what people were feeling. You feel lightheaded, and then there's that feeling of inhibition. You can do anything you want. I mean, I can just urinate here in front of you. You know, you've got all the powers. You can bulldoze everyone. I love this guy. That's what why the these fuck? boys, they mean they come and do baclari and whatever, because they feel that, you know what, they are on top of the world, they can do anything. Mixing it with other stuff, the potency goes higher. You can have one. Thank you, yes, I would. This fucking doctor is like, hey, hey, fuck it, you want one? Hey, fuck it, here you go. I was popping chronomacity. <laughs> you can have one. Would it be possible for me to get quite a few of them? Maybe uh, we, yeah, yeah. Pay for them, of course. Yeah, yeah, sure. sure. No, 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 don't, no, I don't have to, don't have to, don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Hamilton walks into a fucking uh, pharmacy. Hey, can I have some AIDS medicine? They're like, yeah, sure. He's like, can I have like a bunch of them? <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, you can have them. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Not a problem. This guys are high yeah. off them right Don't now. Them. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> Forehead clap. That's actually the first authoritative description I've heard of the effects of ephavirins. So interesting. It sounded like it had a disinhibiting effect, but it didn't sound like a classically <coughs> psychedelic effect, so. I, you know, I was hesitant to try it because the idea of taking an antiretroviral drug recreationally in a country where HIV is a massive problem uh, just seems like the sort of thing that would make people go crazy. But because the doctor actually gave me 30 tablets and specifically instructed me to take one, I feel like I have no choice but to try it once and, and characterize the effects. Are you ready? ready. Here we go. And the finale. Right now is 12.43. I'm gonna start a timer. I have certain expectations based on the published binding data that it will behave like a classical psychedelic. It's oh certainly been connected with disturbing dreams or intense dreams or nightmares in certain instances, but really the only way to crack that kind of a mystery is to take the drug. Take one tablet at bedtime only. Yeah, just, just, just take one and then you, you'll understand what I'm talking about. I fucking love his eyes. God damn. Part two's part of this video. Alright. The part we've all been waiting for. Not really. I could talk to a cop. I could call my parents on the phone. There is definite activity but then the actual character of the activity is unclear, and the duration of the activity is unclear. All you know is that there is a drug effect going on. So my interest in this came from a, a news report that I had seen uh, on a, a Saturday afternoon uh, where um, there was a report on... Both scientists, by the way. I just fucking... He Holy shit! Read. Hamilton Morris is fucking Okabe. He's the real life Okabe. <laughs> Holy shit. It just came to me. He's just, oh my god. Holy shit, epilepsy. Yeah, his fucking intro is epileptic as hell. That's pretty true. People in South Africa uh, using a Favarin's uh, recreationally. At the University of Texas, I met with John Setch a pharmacologist who published a groundbreaking paper that demonstrated the unexpected activity of ephavirins as a classical psychedelic. Dr. Setch found LSD-like properties? Pog! Ephavirins can substitute for LSD in specially trained rats. Basically, they train um, a rat uh, in a lever press task, 
and they can discriminate or tell the difference by pressing a lever. So you train them up on, uh, let's say, LSD uh, versus saline. So one lever, they would press it if they uh, are experiencing saline, or they would press the other lever if they're experiencing um, LSD. What you do in those trained animals is then you substitute in, uh, let's say, your experimental drug. In this case, it would be a favorenz. And so in rats, trained to discriminate LSD from saline, when we substituted in a favorenz, the drugs they had never experienced, they pushed the lever saying that it was like LSD. Um, we were prevented from testing even higher doses, but at higher doses of a favorenz, the animals don't uh, press levers, and so you're, you're sort of limited by how high Forehead. it is. Forehead doctor. I mean, there's a little, maybe a little trailing activity, maybe a tiny, bit of trailing, a tiny bit. Because the effect is already so subtle, I'm going to go forward and take a full 900 milligrams. That fucking, that fucking smile. Although there's no way to evaluate whether or not a rodent is hallucinating, scientists have discovered that classical psychedelics induce a unique effect in mice and rats. That effect is called the head twitch response. They mark with an asterisk to alert you that the head twitch response will occur. It's very rapid. The fuck? There it was. <laughs> if you're not looking, you'll miss it. Uh, you see that application of the same concentration of efavirenz doesn't produce head twitch in the knockout mouse, uh, suggesting that the head twitch response is being mediated through the 5-HC2A receptor. Drug testing on animals is hella weird, champ. Like you don't know what they're thinking, so you could never know. Exactly. That's why. That's why. That's why Hamilton exists, <laughs> because people are coming out with uh, alternatives to that, and Hamilton was one of the volunteers. Five <laughs> HT. Who studied this shit? So they're like, "Hey, fuck it, you do the test instead." Two A is a subtype of but serotonin yeah, I agree. receptor that plays an important role in the activity of classical psychedelics. When activity at 5-HT2A is blocked, genetically or pharmacologically, rodents no longer display the head twitch response. We're in Linville, near Whitbank, on our way to meet some Niobe dealers who are going to be <laughs> cutting hell. their product with antiretroviral drugs, supposedly. Whether or not this will actually take place is unclear, especially because they're using the word cook somewhat ambiguously. And I don't know what cooking really means in this context. As we approached the lair of the clandestine Niope cooks, I prepared myself to finally understand the logic behind their strange recipe. How did you come upon this particular formula? How did you decide that all of these different ingredients- Look at his, f his outfits are always so fucking good. This guy, he has some fucking taste in coats. I'm just saying. Like when he flies out to Africa, or South America, wherever he's going for whatever episode, he must pack like 20 fucking coats, I swear. Ingredients would be useful in the final it's product. crazy. You see, every, every nation, did two parts to formulate Sherlock this. Holmes. You see, when we are together, people with different ideas, we combine them, we come up with one big thing. Though I had remained skeptical throughout my research, when I saw the ARV tablets on the table of the cutters, I was forced to confront the possibility that the stories were true. There's a guy that came from Nigeria by the name of Olu. He's the one who came with the formula. Who do you think taught him? He said he taught by his uncle. The uncle of his was looking for another Chinese guy who was staying in Jovek. These guys learn their recipes, and then when they have the recipes... It's this man's connections, trade. honestly. Because it's a secret, there's no Darwinian action to the idea. It's a trade. Is this fucking Benadryl? What is this? <laughs> because it's a secret, there's no Darwinian action to the idea. Because they don't really understand how it's happening. They just learned somebody's taught them how to do this. When we 
grind the red text. We don't just take the, the too much of it, just the little bit. The thing is the dizziness. Your body's here with me, but your mind will be on the other side of town, you see. It's hard to tell what's actually having a pharmacological effect and how much of it's just tradition or folklore. These pills, they give it um, a power down, uh, to make you drunk. They store it at the clinics, at the hospital, and then they supply us. Probably the antiretrovirals are a minor part of the, the orchestra there, just because it's available. Despite the fact that it's actually very, it's a very expensive drug, um, it, uh, it's, it's around people got actually it's literally, they're taking, uh, never mind. Who thought this was a good idea? And I see that you have three different antiretroviral drugs there. Do you think that one of True. them is better than the others? It's just when you take this one and this one, you make a mixture, it becomes the power of this one. After introducing a teaspoon of Ratax pellets and saturating the crushed powder with apple cider vinegar, the Niope cooks wrapped the pink oh, paste okay. in aluminum foil and placed it in a microwave. I think this this is largely drug use born out of poverty and boredom. People are obviously experimenting with a lot of things until they get it right. Why? You see, to avoid <laughs> certain things, we took the foil out. And so if you had a choice between pure heroin or the Niope mixture that you make, which would you choose? No, I would choose this one because it's a little bit better. So if you use the pure opium tar from the poppy plant, you'd expect very bad stomach pains. Yes. But if you put rat poison into that tar, it actually makes the stomach pains less severe. Yes, yes. Oh. Not too much of it. That's why. Because we are cooking this thing. It's affect us more than the one who smoked. Why would the rat poison prevent the... the... whatever, I don't know. You see, my original body is not like this. My original color is not like this. When you see my photos before, now, sometimes I cry. Type of hands. He cries. Such a bad idea. How did they not blow up the den? I know. <laughs> and the journey continues. The journey uh, continues. So we make the assumptions that uh, the studies that we do in animals will uh, translate one to one into humans, and that that may uh, not be true. It may only be partly true. We never had the tried to simulate having the rats smoke uh, the drug. Because recreational users smoke efavirins the temperature could transform the chemical into an entirely different molecule. To test this hypothesis, I met with the medicinal chemist Jason Wallach to burn efavirins under controlled conditions. For this experiment, we're gonna use the entirety of the pill to try and simulate the exact conditions that the tablet is smoked in South Africa. Yeah, what's really cool is that this lab that I'm working at, we're building a machine. Did he say yo? Yeah, what's really cool is that the <laughs> lab that I'm working at, we're building a machine that's like... <laughs> oh, I fucking love this guy. It, just out of nowhere, he'll just do some shit, yeah, I don't know. A machine that will smoke Yo. a tablet, and then we can collect all <laughs> of the smoke and chemically analyze it to see how the drug has changed when it's Yo. burned. It's kind of like a, a series of bombs. He's in a fucking lab coat, and he's like, Yo that you use for smoking weed all connected to one another with a vacuum on one side and a pipe on the other. And then you're able to just take out the water and analyze what's in it. It's like Bill Nye up in here. That's oh, what I said. You mean Bill High? <laughs> okay. This was correct. When heated under certain conditions, efavirins is transformed into an entirely different molecule, the pharmacology of which is unknown. Thanks. Even the activity of the drug when it's consumed orally is something I'm just beginning to understand. I am fully he has a fucking banana. Now. Oh, oh man, is it? Is it? Oh, so we finally get to see why he's high. Okay, finally get to see what the high is like. 
psychedelic in a certain way. I feel sedated, I feel relaxed. But I feel a connection to every other time that I've attempted to articulate a psychedelic experience in front of a camera right now. It feels like it's part of a continuum, a strange, eternal camera articulation continuum. You know, if you, if you feel the effect of weed, you can say, I'm stoned, and people will know I am under the influence of cannabis. If you say I'm drunk from alcohol, people will understand what that feels like. But if you say I'm effovirenzed. <laughs> I'm gonna start saying that. I'm effovirenzed right now, dude. Holy shit, I'm so effovirenzed right now. You guys don't even know. You wouldn't know. Oh man, I'm so effovirenzed! <laughs> <laughs> Forehead. I mean, you have to imagine there are literally thousands of targets for drugs in your body. Uh, I would venture to say that most drugs are interacting on more than one target. We would uh, certainly hope to develop um, drugs that wouldn't have uh, some of the side effect profiles that you currently see and that might also, we believe, we could probably simultaneously engineer out any abuse potential uh, for the compounds. I would argue that in South Africa, adherence to antiretroviral drugs has actually been quite high. And I think the bizarre images and the very vivid dreams, um, they seem to create the impression that the antiretroviral drugs are very potent and very powerful, and that they're potent and powerful enough to fight a very powerful disease. Like the tingly stuff in the, you know, the anti-dandruff shampoo or whatever. Something that people, whether it has any actual effect on the condition or not, that actually lets people know, okay, you're experiencing a medical, a pharmacological effect now. The fuck? When you consider that possibility, it seems like it could actually be detrimental to redesign the drug in such a way that it that doesn't have any psychoactive properties anymore. Sure. Yeah, I, I haven't seen any controlled studies done on that, so I'd have to evaluate that, that data in terms of of compliance. All right, okay, the mice uh, discriminated that stimulus correctly. A whole new world just opened up. A whole new pharmacophore, a whole new scaffold. This could be a completely new base structure to make new psychedelics. It could be an entirely new class. Everything improves, you know. The computer started being a big computer. Now we carry it, it's a laptop. The next time it won't be a laptop, it's just a wash. You know, everything changes. What? Yeah, pretty true. Afavirens is psychedelic. At the beginning of the piece, I said Look at this fucking chair! To take the drug in order to understand it. <laughs> Holy and shit! what pharmacology is all about, which is a little bit of an oversimplification, but it's true that there are certain questions in psychopharmacology that can't be effectively answered by a rodent. I hadn't seen anyone write, I've taken it, it is psychedelic. It's comparable to LSD. Nothing like that existed, and for that reason, I wanted to take it. And for that reason, it was useful to take it, because I answered my question. It is classically psychedelic. That said, it's not pleasant at all. Although the acute effects were somewhat enjoyable and comparable to mescaline, I was bedridden and totally incapacitated for almost two days afterwards. So this is something I've actually been very conflicted about reporting on. On one hand, I understand and feel a responsibility for conveying accurate information about this substance. But the possibility that anyone would divert this drug away from its intended medical purpose is actually very frightening. It is psychedelic, but so are lots of other things that are more potent, less expensive, and less toxic and dangerous to use at high doses. How is he like Sheldon? I... Hold on. Where is it? Fuck. Oh my god, where the fuck is- Here it is. Do you look at this and think Sheldon Cooper? I am fully f of irons Because I don't... I don't fucking see that, dude. Damn, look at this shot. Mm, there it is.
He is kind of monotone when he's not high, though. So I guess, yeah, I get that. Um... Where is... Is there a way I can take take a look at, like, the entire... Here we go. Um... As a matter of fact, he does. Okay. <laughs> um... Underground LSD Palace... I kind of want to, I, I really want to watch the one where he gets high on frogs, but the issue is that one's like 50 minutes long. So, check. Would we be down to watch a, like, 50 minute Hamilton Morris documentary where he gets high off of frogs in a South American village in a fucking rainforest? Let me, let me type it in chat so that there's no, like, delay. Okay. Do we watch the 50 minute one where he gets high off of frogs? <clears throat> I have to know. I am completely down. I might not be awake for the whole thing. But yeah. Alright. Listen. Alright, let's do it. I've already seen this one. I mean, I saw the last one too, I just didn't really watch it to the end. So the fucking HIV medication is like... It's shit, <laughs> from what I gathered. So they put rat poison in it to make it more fun. And they make it so you don't get fucking stomach aches because they put morphine in there too to prevent the fucking poison from killing you or some shit. It's like, everything just kind of, like, bounces- I don't know, it's fucking weird. I, I know less about the substance than I did when I started that video. Fucking love it. Alright. I'm gonna skip the opening because of epilepsy warning. I'm gonna start playing it, I'm gonna go get something to drink and get it a fucking apple pie, so I'll be right back. Alright. currently boating through a flooded forest on our way to meet the Mayaruna Indians, a Look at him, dude. cannibalistic tribe who use a strange frog-derived drug they call sapo. They use it to give themselves energy before hunting. They use it to abort pregnancies by rubbing these women's vaginas with it. This venom contains an <clears throat> opioid peptide. This is really quiet. It's times stronger than morphine. And uh, some people say that it's psychedelic. It doesn't activate any of the psychedelic receptors as far as I know. But there's also a lot about the venom that we don't know. The venom produces some kind of a strange effect. It makes you vomit. And, uh, and then supposedly you spend the next eight hours Wait, you're gonna sleep? Fucking loser. Dude, you're in this for the long run. We're all in this now. This is Hamilton Morris night. You don't just sign out. You buy the ticket, you take the fucking ride. And I'm not a fat ass. It's a miniature apple pie for the fucking information. God damn. Alright. There's some kind mm. of a daze and uh, wake up feeling fantastic the next day. And uh, they're going to ritualistically burn me and rub the frog venom into my wounds, and then it's going to produce some sort of a strange effect. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to do, but we'll find out. So they're going to take a stick. They're going to get the fucking frog sweat on it. They're going to burn the stick and fucking burn his skin with it. To make him hallucinate. Holy shit. <laughs> I forgot how they did it. I thought they injected it. No, they burn him with it. Thank you for flying with the Republican member of Copa Alliance.
I have arrived in Tabatinga after days of traveling. It's an impossibly humid rainforest city built by drug traffickers and sandwiched between the borders of Colombia and Peru. I feel like I'm being gang-banged by vegetation. Every visible surface is coated with growing plants. The streets are overrun with motorcycles, scooters, and mopeds. I can feel that the jungle is near. I go to the dock, where the journey will begin. Gang banged by vegetation. And meet our guide, Juan. Before we exchange a word, he looked at my long hair and started laughing hysterically. He said the Mayaruna Indians are going to think I'm a woman. They're going to kidnap me as a wife. Then he repeated the joke a million times during the course of our day. La mano. <laughs> I board a boat, which is a 30 foot long canoe with a wicker awning in the middle. I meet the other crew member, a man introduced as the captain who will run the boat's small motor. I'm gonna play it at 1.25 speed, so just it goes by a little bit quicker. Because I know he's really fucking slow in this one. Just because, like, he's probably high on so much shit. I don't know. How the fuck did old people... Uh, how, sorry, how the fuck did people come up with these drugs? Like, who wakes up one day and goes, I'm gonna find a rare frog and burn someone with a sweat. I know! I don't fucking know how half of these drugs come into existence. Like, how these people figured this shit out. I guess people in the past were desperate. Ooh, hey. We make a quick stop to pick up a giant block of filthy frozen river water. Why? The ice block is dragged out of the freezer through a heap of bloody gutted catfish. The captain then proceeds to smash up the ice blocks with a rusty machete and throw the chunks into a couple of styrofoam coolers which will hold our minuscule food supply. Juan says the ice will last six days, but that seems totally impossible. Hmm. It's weird. We're on the Amazon River right now. We're still on the border of Peru, Brazil, and Colombia. With Colombia this way, Brazil this way, and Peru that way. Because of its proximity to Colombia and Peru, Tabatinga has become one of the main entry points for cocaine traffickers into Brazil. <clears throat> I'm told the chance of us encountering cocaine being shuttled around is not too low. The rain season is when the Amazon River swells up. Filthy frozen river water sounds like an edgy middle school band name. <laughs> that's that's the fuck. That's the best thing I've heard all day. Holy and shit! Hemorrhages out of that's so inside. accurate. That's the subdivision of mudrakers that broke away from the main mudraker group and made their own band. There are trees growing <laughs> on trees, ants crawling on ants, and penis fish swimming up the urethra of other penis fish. I'm sorry, Hamilton, can you say that again? Trees growing on trees, ants crawling on ants, and penis fish swimming up the urethra of other penis fish. It's exhausting to watch. In order to save time, we take a detour through the flooded jungle. There you have it. Penis fish swimming up the, ure the urethras of other penis fish. Thank you, Hamilton. Our crew consists of Juan in front with the machete, the captain in the back motoring us around, and Alex, who is in charge of security, Alex. should we run into any hostile drug traffickers. But that's sort of something that hasn't been discussed in too much detail at this point, I guess. It's gonna be three days upriver. Each night we're going to stay on the side of the river in some sort of a shack, and then we find the Mayaruna. Should I skip to the part of the documentary where he actually gets to the village and tries it? You think I should do that? Hmm. That whole part is like the only 
Like, like it's all good. It's all really funny and fun to watch. But like, I think that part is what I should skip to. Hmm. Let me do that. How the fuck does that work? There'd have to be a substantially smaller penis fish to go inside the penis fish of another penis fish. Exactly. Whatever. I try not to question good old Hamilton. Especially Jesus Hamilton. Now let's write this through. Really? Alright. Hey, fuck it. I'm fine with that. Alright. Hmm. Who are trying to contact the Indians. Juan also tells me the Amazon is full of creatures scientists know nothing about. Once, while deep in the jungle, he encountered a fur-covered beast with only one eye. Him and the beast exchanged a glance, and as a result, Juan suffered a five-month-long fever. I had been smoking JWH-18 laced cigarettes and was too high to be skeptical, so instead, I opted for extreme fear. What? What'd he say? Cigarette. Fever. I had been smoking JWH 18 laced cigarettes. And the beer. fuck, Hamilton? <laughs> Besides Funai, we have plenty to worry about. There's rampant malaria and hepatitis epidemics. The waters are infested with piranhas, snakes, and kendiru penis fish. And the air is filled with biting insects. Penis fish again. The homes along the river are becoming further and further apart. And we dock early today with a small family living on the shore. Monka W. The air is vibrating with swarms of mosquitoes. I have never seen anything like this in my life. The insects are impossibly bloodthirsty, and they remove a plug of flesh when they bite. In minutes, my hands are covered with bleeding, swollen sores. <laughs> You know what's really fascinating to me? The fact that, like, there's all these, like, villages and shit. Pardon us. In, like, uh. South America and shit. That, like, look how far behind they are in, like, civilization. They live in, like, these shacks and shit. I find that, sh like, so interesting. I don't know. I don't know. It's just me. And, uh, that the food doesn't poison me too severely. Oh, chickens? The fuck? How much food is that? Some days. The fuck? Feels bad, man. Some three more. Pippa hands. Night falls, and the incredible number of bugs discourages me from bathing once again. I lay in my hammock while mosquitoes squeal past my ears. The mosquito net and bug spray are only a formality at this point. There is no escape. Monka W, what the fuck? Day three. I wake up totally massacred by bugs. It would be much easier to describe where I don't have mosquito bites. My hair, fingernails, asshole, and the inside of my mouth. You expecting primitive villages to be full of skyscrapers and advanced technology? Yeah. You take a Polaroid of our host's daughter, <laughs> give it to her, and get out of That's not what I meant. I meant, like, it's really interesting that there are primitive villages. Not what's in them, like, I mix- n never mind. The ancient village of the frog. As we'll arrive at the Mayaruna village. The ancient village of the frog. Feels Pepe, man. The Pepe village. Day three. I still haven't bathed, but I think that's gonna change soon, because I want to 
look my best for the Mayaruna. I have uh, mosquito bites on every square inch of my body. My neck is just like a necklace of searing pain that, well, I don't even know how they were able to target my neck, but, uh, well, I'm miserable right now. Wow, oh, this sounds awful. I didn't hear you. No worries. It's been uh, four days since I've bathed. Four Casual. incredibly sweaty days. Aw, oh, man. Gachi base. There he is. It's been a long time since I've taken off my pants. <laughs> Thank you, Hamilton. Thank you. It's been a long time since he's taken off his pants. Oh, it's actually ice cold. <laughs> ice. This dude looks like one of the fucking hollows in Dark Souls. <laughs> <laughs> I lost Craigasm. <laughs> Am I allowed to show this on Twitch? <laughs> God damn the fucking bug bites, dude. Clamp the jet straight out of the river. Children peer over the edge at us and then run to our boat to carry our bags up the cliff. Dude, he's like, you shut the fuck up. <laughs> I mean, true, but yeah, yeah, that's pretty true. I can't even. If I fall, I'm three days from the nearest hospital. He wasn't talking to you. He was. Never mind. Fuck Hamilton! Three days from the nearest hospital. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so it's actually we could chat? very refreshing to be here, although it's extremely hot. The Mayaruna village is a collection of huts spread across a large dusty clearing. The insects are prehistoric. Come on, bro. As of now, the plan is. Why are they just stalking that guy with the camera? Catch the frog, and then in the morning after the frog has been caught, we'll harvest the secretion. Oh, they're gonna go hunt for the frog! Burn me and rub them into my wounds. <laughs> we walk into the hut of our host, a man named Petro. His face is covered in tattoos he gave himself with a tree thorn needle and black fungus ink. Juan asks Petro okay, if he thinks I'm a woman. Petro says no. Juan looks defeated. The fuck is that? Is oh, is that the... Stick. Yeah. You can actually see some... Dried sapo. It's a moldy bread type smell, definitely. The fuck is he? They gave it to kids? These kids are tripping off of frogs! <laughs> we bully you all you want. All we want, forehead. The chief's son takes me to his pharmacy, which is a hut stockpiled with a modest supply of antibiotics. Ibuprofen, oh. aspirin, neo ampicillin. It's very good. It makes me feel like if I come close to death uh, after my SAPO administration, they will be able 
to slap me with some uh, ampicillin. It's just nice to see people are on top of medicine. It's good. I could go for some uh, ice cold lemonade right now. Okay, Hamilton. Here we are outside waiting for the frog to sing. Even though it's the rainy season, it hasn't rained in days, and usually the frog doesn't make any sounds unless it's wet. So we're just waiting. It might be hours and hours and hours before it makes any sound at all. But uh, right now, I'd like to just have an ice cream cone and... Uh, okay, Hamilton. Maybe, maybe, a, maybe a cool glass of lemonade. You said that already, Hamilton. Maybe a, maybe a cool glass of penis fish to wash down the ice cream. A little bit before dawn, Petro hears the song and calls back to the sapo. Hey, the chat! Park. What the fuck he is he? out of the hut, into the jungle, and out of sight. He returns half an hour later, empty-handed. It's 5.20 in the morning right now. Uh, they just came back out of the woods and said that they didn't hear it after all. If it rains, then the frog will sing and, and we'll go into the woods. But until then, I will return to my hammock and uh, continue waiting. So, you don't talk to a mod like that? So this is the episode, they actually go and they, they look for the fucking frog. Oh man. The adventure to find the frog to get high off of. Day four. Let's go find out what we're eating for breakfast. Hamilton, you having you having some issues with your fucking thing? Boiled eggs and bread. And uh. That would appear to be it. Hamilton's <laughs> yeah, more important than orgasm. True! Barely use my hands anymore. I count 52 bites on my left hand and 51 bites on my right hand, which is so swollen I cannot make a fist. You got me on my belly. Hey! You can't show your fucking pubes! Oh, Hamilton! Here. It's incredibly itchy. At least now we know that Hamilton doesn't shave. So when he fucked the... Raining. When he fucked the, the pig head... It's Never mind. pouring for a while now. It's just drizzling. The sun is gonna come out soon. And uh, we've been assured by our host, Petro that the frog will sing tonight and in the meantime i think we're just going to wait in our hammocks and try to escape the swarms of insects until the sun sets don't hear me complaining hey my man i give petro a copy of vice and he indicates that it would make good masturbation material <laughs> The rain ends and the midday sun breaks through the clouds. My man! And the insects come back with a vengeance. I've barely left the hut today. It's actually so hot that I uh, can barely stand. And, uh, and even if I were to leave the hut, there's very, very little to do. You can actually just laying in the hammocks, you can hear the sound, the collective sound of all the insects swarming around everything. It's just like a loud buzz. And uh, the sun is so hot that I would, well, I mean, I will. I actually haven't even been outside today. I'll go outside and have a look, but it's, uh, well, actually, I just took a Ritalin, so I'm feeling sort of energetic. Maybe I'll. Oh, okay, dude. Uh, go outside. And, He's always just uh, popping pills or smoking shit. He doesn't care what it is. Oh, it's not that bad. <laughs> Paradise. <laughs> okay, Hamilton. Oh my god. These animals. It's like 
Monk a W. Holy shit. Oh, this is, this, this is a swarming. This is how my... It's actually just... I'm already covered in my own blood from these creatures. Oh my god. Well, this is why I'm staying inside. It's really just... It's terrifying. He's gonna get malaria? Dude, he probably will. Hey, Rags, what's popping? Night comes and we sit half awake, listening for the frog song. While writing in my diary, I hear some commotion outside. I decide to go out and. Is he wearing one of the fucking, like. <laughs> Man, fucking Hamilton. We just ran into some trouble because, uh. The chief's son got news on the radio that Funai is coming to check on this tribe in a couple days, probably even tomorrow, and we still haven't found the frog. Funai is the Brazilian organization that, uh, that, that protects these indigenous groups, and if they find out that we're here without a license, we're here illegally, we'll have to get the fuck out of here without the frog. And. Uh, I have a feeling our guide will be in big trouble. So, it's essential <laughs> that we get the frog tonight and that Funai doesn't arrest us all. And there you go. There he goes. Off into the fucking darkness. Around two in the morning, the sapo sings, and again, we all rush into the jungle. Good <laughs> He's the only clothed one. The fuck? Look how foggy the camera's getting too. Petro, our host, calls to it every now and then. Uh, <laughs> Fucking Hamilton. But I don't think he's having any luck finding it. I'm not sure normally how long it takes to find it. <laughs> how many fucking substances you reckon fucking Hamilton is on in this shot? I'm guessing four, at least. He probably snuck in there and took the Benadryl, right? He tripped out a fucking Benadryl. <laughs> This is exhilarating. <laughs> no? <laughs> He's like, so you woke me up for nothing, bitch? <laughs> now it's morning. We're trying to figure out what to do. Funai is on its way. We'll be arriving today. The frog... The frog, uh... sang, but we were unable to find it. And now, it's day. So... We don't know what the fuck to do. Good night, guys. Hey, good day. Day five. Oh boy. I think this is the day that they actually get it. This is our third day with the Mayaruna Indians. I have mosquito-induced shell shock and swat constantly at insects that are not even there. There you go. We hand out batteries, pens, notebooks, t-shirts, and other trash. As a parting gift, Petro's wife gives me a grass bracelet she had just made. I'm fucking sleepy, please. Hey, that's fine. Just leave my stream up. <laughs> Have a good night. We have officially run out of food, but fortunately, a child offers to kill a chicken for us. <laughs> what? Damn, this turned into an alinity stream real quick. Didn't catch the frog. Oh, God, 
Funai is coming. We've got to run. Moments before we killed it, the chicken ran away. Good night. Have a good night, my dude. So, onward. The child eventually finds and kills the chicken and brings its limp body back to us. <laughs> but luckily, a child offers to kill a chicken As for us. As plucks the dead chicken, Juan tells us of another place downriver where we might be able to find the frog. Goodbye. It's nice to meet all of you. <laughs> My dude said goodbye, and everyone just kind of looked at him like, the fuck you doing? Hello? <laughs> We say goodbye to the Mayaruna and get out of there fast to avoid Funai. Uh, I love them. They were great. I learned a lot. It's good. It was time that we went, though. We start heading towards the floating home of a shaman downriver. A we shaman. All sincerely hope that he can help us find the frog. We're at this house right now, trying to buy some fresh fish from the river. Would you really want to eat fish out of that river though? Absolutely. I mean, you don't really have much of a choice. Holy fuck. And it looks pretty nice. Oh, little chicks. This is just like the house of, uh, of incredibly cute, animals coming from hell into the chick and butterfly sanctuary. Oh yeah, that's, that's fresh fish. We were given a like buying penis fish? Dude! Fish Finally buying the penis fish! Free, which is extremely unusual considering we had to uh, we had to pay about 150,000 batteries and 6,000 cigarettes and 100 million t-shirts for uh, for this earlier. Um, it's nice that? to get a free fish. Goyaba. Quieres? <laughs> Quieres? <laughs> Dude. We're approaching the shaman's house right now. In a few minutes, we'll know for sure whether or not he can help us. Man. De noche? Quedamos aquí y vamos a mirar si cogemos el sapo. ¿Quién sabe preparar el sapo? The captain knows. Holy shit! Plot twist. Oh wow! Look at that. <laughs> this is a Minecraft yeah, witch hunt. Too Candace friendly. <laughs> Hypers! <laughs> My man flinched. There's a small monkey walking around on the ground. Oh, what the fuck? The most incredibly cute thing I've ever seen in my life. What the fuck? I just want to rub its little head. It looks like the RuneScape monkeys. Jesus. And, uh, and see what we can dig up. They what they doing? I think they're stopping here because the frog sings in this in this like little patch of woods. That's what they just said. And the captain's like, dude, I know how to fucking get high off the frog. Let's stay here and find it. This is our dinner tonight. <laughs> Four fish for six people. I'm extremely hungry. I uh they're not especially big fish, but 
We can supplement it with canned wieners if I'm still. It is penis fish. Afterwards. Our captain is out fishing as we speak, so hopefully we'll grab a few more by uh, dinner time. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're just, they're just fucking fishing. Fish. It's truly a through the water before dinner, but keep catching the Kandiru penis fish. Penis fish. I like how I skip right to when he says penis fish, too. It's truly a horrifying <laughs> sight, with razor-sharp retractable fangs which whip in and out of its face in a split second. Quando, assim, com 10, 15 minutos, tu vai tirar a pessoa e até com as comidas quase, assim, um braço, uma perna, ou o que ele pegar. Mira, mira. Tem umas pequenas que entram pela venta. E, muitas vezes, quando a pessoa está mexendo dentro da água, porque tem muitas pessoas que tiram o pipi dentro da água e mexem, né? E aí, ele entra. Inside the penis. Pelo pipi. É uma vez que entrou para dentro, vai destorando as tripas todinho. Uhum. E aí tem. Se tu tá longe do hospital, como vai te socorrer? Apparently, it likes to swim up assholes as well. Oh, nice. I think I'll avoid bathing for a bit. Oh. We eat rice and river fish for dinner. Oh, fuck If the that. shaman's home has everything from toucan to penis fish, I am confident we will find Look the at frog. Him. It's elegant. in the morning, we heard the frog. Our host jumped into a canoe and went out to find it. We haven't seen him since, and I don't know what's going on. He's somewhere out in the trees. I wait one hour for him to come back. This is becoming very discouraging. I begin to wonder if we're ever going to find this mysterious little frog. Drugs and penis fish. That's all you need. Sounds like a night on the town, in my opinion. Jesus. There's the shaman. Damn. It's day six. No, I was kind of expecting him to be in like, in a, like a robe, right? Or like a staff. It's just in a t-shirt and shorts. Shaman just arrived. We asked him if he could help us with the frog. He said he wasn't sure, but in the meantime, he said that he could help us brew some ayahuasca. Pog. It's first time drinking ayahuasca. But they've been saying that if you've had it in the United States, it's not the same thing. It's much stronger. Mas fuerte in the Amazon. And, uh... Ayahuasca tea, dude. nothing else to do, well... That shit fucks frog, you up. So why not? Wait, they just like they drink the tea and they just go onto the fucking boat. <laughs> All right. We're trekking through the forest right now, collecting the necessary plants to brew some ayahuasca. They said it was only two minutes in, but. It looks like it might be a bit further. This is our first expedition on dry land. Gang bang by vegetation. Yeah, they do use machetes a lot, don't they? Feet are in pain. I'm getting blisters from these fucked up boots we're wearing. It's too thick to move. Oh, we're Craig, really guys, I'm too thick. Seriously deep in the jungle right now. <laughs> I want to watch that again. Deep in the jungle right now.
Poor Hamilton. I'm keeping an eye out for the frog while we're here, but I somehow doubt it's this deep in the jungle. What is that? You found it. They found it? Oh. I thought they were talking about the, uh, oh, ayahuasca. I thought they were talking about the frog, dude. I believe this is the ayahuasca vine, although it looks different from what I've seen in the past. No. No, this is purita. Puro. Puro, puro. Puro. There's an inevitable confusion when discussing ayahuasca. That would be a penis plant. Because there are about 150 different names for it. It's Dude, frog. Dude, we all know what ayahuasca is, right? It's the plant. You just turn it, make it into a tea. You get the fucking wavy hallucinogenic experience. We all know what it is. That would be a penis plant. Thank you, sir. Juan and the captain went out in one of the canoes. They're in the woods right now. Looking for the frog and uh, finally we'll catch it. Nada correct. About to be spent a late sim. One rare ass frog. The captain started climbing it, but stuck his hand in a beehive and had to paddle away. They're gonna. Wait until the day and then try and chop down the tree and catch the frog that way. Early in the morning, a miracle happens. A miracle? The shaman finds the frog in the jungle and leaves it for us in a nearby tree. Hell yeah, shaman! <laughs> They finally actually got it after what 40 minutes. So now we get to finally see what it's like to get high off of a frog. Thank God. And there it is, the fucker. Wow! 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 Oh my God! It's just a beautiful, gigantic creature. We've been searching for this for five days now. I can't even believe it. We finally have it. We actually caught the frog. We actually have it. We caught the frog! Philo Medusa Frog. Okay. Come, come to me. Oh, oh my god, it's... Damn. Is it on my head? <laughs> Forehead. <laughs> oh my god. Where is it? Where is it? It's on my ass? Yeah, on your ass. Is it hanging off the bottom of my ass? <laughs> that guy is losing his shit and Hamilton's just like, man. This is kind of fun. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, can someone get it off my ass? <laughs> Where is it actually? On your ass? Oh, he likes it oh. there. Opa. His PhD is in oh drugs? It is. It actually oh. is, unironically. Rubber fingers. Damn. It could be placebo, but I swear I can feel like a sensation in my hands from where it's touched me. That's so bizarre. <laughs> it's such a weird creature. We got on the boat and started rowing towards the mouth of the jungle.
Let's smoke. Jumped. Let's smoke some frog. Suddenly, the frog dives into the river. I peer over the boat, but he's already ten feet away, jetting through the water towards a tree. Ah! And cuts him off in the water. You see that? The frog jumps inside the canoe. Monka TOS. And we carry him to the shore. All right, finally, the, the 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 finale, part three out of three. They finally get high off the frog sweat. Come on, give it to me, Hamilton. And there it is. Juan lights a stick on fire and gets a glowing orange. The captain does not react. He takes two more burns the same way, and then Juan begins to rub the jelly in. God, that's so the weird. They burn the sweat into them. <laughs> Cute little froggy. Yeah, something like that. Does he feel anything? Yeah. He's beginning to feel it. <laughs> Fucking Hamilton. The captain stands with a far off look in his eye. Then he sits down and puts his head in his hands. He says that everything is spinning and that he can feel it in his gut. <laughs> I feel bad for the frog, they won't let it go. Yeah, they will. Yeah, they do after. <laughs> Down he goes. My man overdosed on a frog. They pour a bucket of water over his burns and head because they think it will counteract the venom. <laughs> <laughs> and then the captain jumps into the piss river he looks at me and says that he's fine now it's my turn oh boy Juan picks up a stick off the ground and lights it on fire. It's much thicker than the sticks the Mayaruna use. Hey, thicker the better. <sighs> Fucking Hamilton. <laughs> no sensation yet, no sensation yet. Now it stings. The sight of the burn now hurts a lot more than when he initially did it. Still no psychoactive effect, no psychedelic effect, no visual distortions. The fuck is that? Oh, it's okay. Never mind. Nothing at first. Then slowly. He's waving the bugs. I was like, "What the fuck is he doing?" Drunken headedness. It feels good. I feel high. <clears throat> or sort of. <laughs> a little bit dissociated. It's not necessarily unpleasant. Frog sweat, by the way. <laughs> Hamilton is one skinny motherfucker, yeah. Yeah, he is. <laughs> What's your feeling right now, man? <sighs> Very little. I mean, I feel an extreme pain in my arm where I was burned and had venom rubbed in the wound mm -hmm. and I feel a little bit high um, in a good way <laughs> let me get one more one more oh, Hamilton Mr. Morris I don't know if you want that shit <laughs> He has the body. Hamilton has the body of like a hollow from Dark Souls. Like, I totally see him walking around like Lothric Castle. 
Good, yeah, everybody make sure to touch it. Oh, God, Jesus Christ. Oh. Juan then reapplies the poison jelly to my wounds. Get it in your wound. Get it reapplied to the other wounds while you're at it. Oh. Okay. They're giving him more? Fan me. <laughs> okay. They need to give me a thousand of these. I'll fucking do it. Now there's a, a new sensation taking over a arm, like a, like a like it's falling asleep, like a pins and needles sort of sensation. It's happening in both of my hands. Like I'm losing sensation in both my hands. Oh, he's he's fucking doing ketamine. It's feeling more sinister now. It's very strange. Hamilton, don't drop dead. Saturated with a distinct, uh, drunken weirdness. It's bad. It's unpleasant. Not for up to. Look at his arms, dude. Part of me wants to lay down, just like lay down in the hammock or something. They're so skinny, but they're so long. <laughs> I love that this dude is fucking ah uh, yeah, gracias. <laughs> oh no, fucking Hamilton. I feel like a frog. <laughs> this dude's such a forehead. The people that surround me, I swear, ban me like I'm an emperor. I lay shirtless on a plastic tarp. My stomach is in excruciating pain. The frog and me exchange a glance. What is that? Oh, it's bagged water? My man has bagged water. If they think I should do another one, I would consider doing another one. I request a fourth burn. More sapo than the Hamilton! Doctor. Who's the moo hair now? He's gonna overdose some fucking frog. Numero quattro. <laughs> oh, wow. Dude, read his syntax is literally fucking Keith. He's like numero quattro, dude. <laughs> it's actually fucking Keith. It's so funny. Drunkenness in my head. Some mild closed eye visuals, but it does feel slightly psychedelic. I think it might be best for me to lay in my hammock now. <clears throat> Unless they think I should wash my wings. I'm feeling extremely. Hamilton's a daredevil? Yeah, dude. He is the daredevil. <laughs> Holy shit, look at the fucking bug bites! He insists that I submerge myself in the shit river in order to sober myself up. I say I don't want to. There's no pharmacological reason that getting wet would clear the venom from my bloodstream. But he insists, so I let him pour gasoline jugs of piss over my head. He's so scrawny. God, I don't know why it's just surprising me so much how fucking bony this dude is. He looks like papyrus. And there it goes. Pepe. Monk W. As the frog is returned to a tree, I lay down in the boat because I'm feeling extremely nauseous. The poison that was hey, still in my blood begins working. Why are they pouring piss over his head to sober him up? Because that's what they uh they think that sobers him up. Fucking piss and water. I gotta go. I speaking of piss, I gotta piss, but I'm gonna keep playing this. So I'll be back in magic. a second. The captain takes me out to a private also, I'm grab another drink. on the edge I'll be right back. of the river. Oh, Hamilton. Okay, For no, most I'll be right people, back. 
The frog causes uncontrollable vomiting, but I did the frog on an empty stomach. So in my case, the purge came the other way. Aspects of the experience were euphoric, and I would consider repeating it, but I'm pretty certain I could achieve the exact same effects by rubbing the jelly inside my nose. Neither the water nor the purging made me sober, and I lay in my hammock, feeling dissociated and nauseous for the next three hours. I feel really fucked up, really exhausted, like I just ate a pound of Valium, and uh, I don't feel too great. I think I could still vomit at any moment. Um, My stomach is, yeah, just an awful turmoil. <sighs> I wake up today feeling like shit. I do not have supernatural powers, Damn. nor do I have a resistance to thirst or hunger. How these drug rumors get started, Yo. I have no idea. Indians, right? I eat an egg for breakfast and pet the monkey orphan's head one last time. Goodbye, What's up? Monkey. I wish him the best. I hope he grows up big and strong and that he's treated like a, a child. <laughs> Then it's time for gift giving. We give the shaman's family our hammocks. Oh, I get it. They give back. As well as an erotic porcelain statuette of two pigs making love, which they seem to cherish. What? What is with Hamilton and fucking pigs having sex? He, I swear, he just, there's something about him and pigs fucking. It's so weird. Mm. I like them. <laughs> I want to see that again. This is like a fucking. I, I, uh, I like them. That gives off the same energy as the the fucking vine, where it's the guy, and like she turns to camera, and he's like, she says like hello, and he's like okay. <laughs> the same fucking energy, I swear. Mm. So we got what we wanted. I did the frog. It was insane. I have the scars right now which are uh, starting to heal. But we also went into the jungle and got a giant bale of ayahuasca vine. Oh, boy. And uh, it left me a little hungry for some ayahuasca. So once we get back to Tabatinga, we're going to look around. Apparently, it's very common to find the DMT containing leaves. And uh, we'll mix up some ayahuasca on our own. Damn, I've always wanted to do ayahuasca. Maybe maybe pure extracted DMT, not so much ayahuasca. I've always wanted to do that with James. Like, that'd be so fucking good. Maybe microdose it, right? Because I don't want to do, like, a full-out trip on it. But that'd be so fucking cool, right? I don't know. The strongest psychedelic in the world? Like, that'd be so fucking cool. I don't know. Seems fun. Seems scary, though. Returning to the city fills me with an incredible joy. My mosquito bites become less itchy, my sun burns less peely, and my intestine less colonized by parasites. The skies are clear, and the banks of the Amazon are monotonous. He's either Sherlock Holmes or a pig in a past life, maybe even both? You probably beautiful. both. Tomorrow, I will prepare the magical brew. Tonight, I rest. So basically, the frog made him drunk and then made him sick. <laughs> hey. Never thought I'd say those words. Day nine. We're back in Tabatinga and we're on our way to meet the ayahuasca shaman who's going to give us something they call toe, which I think is the DMT containing plant. Because when we were still in the jungle, the shaman there only gave us half of the ayahuasca brew. So now we're going to get the rest and we'll mix it up at the hotel. I want to do a really 
Dirty indulgent drug night with you and James one night. That'd be so fucking funny. Like, dude. Yo, what up? Yo, Kuma, what the fuck is popping? Yo, how is how it be, dude? Cozy Craigasm? Aw, oh, man. Yo, welcome. We're watching fucking Hamilton Morris documentaries. The greatest fucking content on all of YouTube by far. Dude, it is so fucking good. I'm chilling, man. Dude, I'm so glad. Welcome. Mm. Real quick. Context. Hamilton Morris is a scientist, right? Whose job it is to do drugs at, that no one knows about and then tell other scientists what they're like. So, yeah, this shit's really fucking entertaining. My man's getting high off of fucking frogs. <laughs> yep. We arrive at the shaman's mm. house, and I'm surprised to find it's a wizened old woman wearing an all pink outfit. We ask her if she has two A to sell to us. She tells us she does, but that if I were to drink it, I would permanently lose my mind. <laughs> he licks me. Come on, bro. Hey, we cool chat. She leads us through her house and then out nice to shirt, a Hamilton. medicinal plant. She brings us to a plant and tells us that is 2A. This is the 2A, I'm assuming. Some people are calling it the Colombian devil's breath. They call it a angel's trumpet, devil's trumpet. It's a delirium. It will give me a miserable nightmare trip. And uh, this is what the shaman was telling me that I needed to get was uh, this devil's trumpet stuff, which is it's good we cleared that up and uh, he didn't have any on him at the time. And Sarah's messy as hell. I mean, can you really blame him? He's been in the jungle for 10 days. Or we see a small tree with lush green leaves. He looks like Tiny Tim. Oh my god. Long hair Hamilton Morris does look like Tiny Tim. or Psychotria viridis plant. Um... It contains DMT and pretty much nothing else. This is, I think, the the gold standard for. Uh, you want to know what I find? Like, I kind of, I kind of hate whenever a scientist or someone says that, like, ayahuasca contains DMT. It's like everything technically contains DMT. They should be saying it has a large quantity of it. I don't know. That's just me. Brewing. I don't know. It, it makes me kind of triggered. Pay for the shakruna and leave for our hotel with all the ingredients needed to brew ayahuasca. This our fucking guy. Is nice enough to let me use their kitchen brewing ayahuasca for the rest of the afternoon. Pardon? The fucking hotel kitchen? Let you do that shit? Hey, Brazil. Hey. In two hours, I'll strain what's left. And that will be that. Here we are at our hotel room in Tabatinga, and I just finished brewing the ayahuasca. This is the MAOI, it's the ayahuasca vine. Definitely the worst thing I've ever tasted, and I've tasted a lot of terrible, terrible drugs. But uh, I'm gonna try and get through about half of this. Here I you go. You mad cunt. Okay. <laughs> it's so slow, monotone. Oh my god. Okay. Dude. He goes back for th this fucker. This is a mad cunt. I've never been so drowsy in my life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I then drink the shakruna leaves. I fall asleep and have strange apocalyptic dreams. I love like ayahuasca and DMT because like you're so fucking tired. You don't even have the energy to shut your eyes entirely when you go to sleep. So you just get this shit. <laughs> Resident sleeper. Hamilton plays trials and fucking dies. 
As they fall deeper into an ayahuasca-induced trance, strange visions and dark premonitions overtake me. In the midst of these visions, I realize that the sapo is only one amphibian enigma in an endless jungle of mind-altering mysteries. There is so much territory left to explore. Hypnotic giraffe bone marrow in Sudan. Sedative sea sponges in the Caribbean. Dream fish of the Pacific Ocean. Narcotic silkworms in China. And unknown synthetics from He's getting fucked up across the globe. Whoa. Oh my. I have a hot take. Hey there, fellas. Hey, what's poppin'? Uh, I Ibrahim seven seventy. I have a hot take, dude. The hell are you watching, dude? We're watching Hamilton Morris, dude. I have a hot take. What if he makes himself extremely fucking uh like skinny on purpose so that he's like lightweight, so you can get like the f you know I I don't know. That was a hot take. Take it with it what you will. It's the penis penis fish stream, dude. What's this now, Hamilton? The ayahuasca makes me extremely tired. I take a Ritalin to combat the sleepiness. Okay, dude. Yep. I guess it's time for a walk. He he actually just fucking stole that shit from... Like, when they went to the, the village before... Before they went to the, um... The fucking shaman's place. I swear to God, he just stole a bunch of fucking, uh... Bottles of shit and just ran with it. Hamilton fucks my mom in Counter-Strike, eh? Hey, lucky mother. Yep, time for a walk! Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> this just made me into a thousand-year-old man. The fuck? <sighs> what is he up to? Twipping balls. Got a boat. <laughs> oh, it's really just like the boat we were in. It's the exact same boat. Boat Pog you. It's a lot. It's a lot more feathers than the boat we were on. And All the like, lights are changing colors. It's a one person. Imagine. He wants to steal the fucking boat, my man. <laughs> Is he dying? The frog was good. What's next? The frog was good. Damn. What the fuck? Alright. So that was the frog. So frog sweat makes you drunk. And it makes you really, really sick. This is so fucking weird, it's making me high. <laughs> Dude, the Hamilton Morris documentaries are like the actual, the best content on YouTube. Let me pull something up over here. Uh, Hamilton Morris Pighead. I'm sure you've seen it around because I send it to everyone, like, as a meme, but... You know the picture of the guy with the pig head, right? And... Like, I send that to people to freak them out and shit. It's him. <laughs> this picture is him. And it's actually not TOS because another streamer has shown it before and was okay. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Like... This, let me find a, let me find a good fucking picture of him. Hold on, th to con contract, con wait, what's the word I'm looking for? Contrast it. This fucking guy is also this fucking guy. This is, hey, this, that's what substances do to someone. <laughs> that's what this line of work does to someone. I'm afraid it's where my evening ends, however. Hey, have a good rest of your night, read. I hope you enjoyed your stay. I'm gonna keep watching some, uh, Hamilton Morris shit. Actual undercover psycho. I know. Well, let me find, uh... 
Hamilton Morris. I'm gonna go get some cookies now. All right, my man. What type of cookies? Now you make me curious. Dude, you know Bill Nye? He's Bill High. Like, dude, same person. I'm sorry. Sorry to say. Chips Ahoy? Hey, my man. I have Chips Ahoy cookies too, but I'm not gonna eat them right now. <laughs> A psychologist. Ah, good one. Fuck. Nacho, have a good rest of your night, my dude. That's why I'm yoinking them as we speak. A hey, moment. Wait, what? Uh, sensory deprivation tanks. I watched that a couple nights ago when I had, or it was more like a week ago when we when we had the edibles in my house. I was like, I want to fucking watch a Hamilton Morris documentary on this shit. It was funny. Psychedelic truffles in Amsterdam. Amsterdam, hey. There's this fucking... Hey, there he is. I'm gonna skip the intro because it's like epileptic. And fucking bright flashy lights. Psychedelic truffles, alright. Here we go, round, round fucking three of Hamilton Morris. Let's grab this shit, dude. Today is Queen's Day in Amsterdam, and I have three containers of psilocybin containing truffles. I'm going to start by taking eight grams of this 15 gram container because that's what the man at the smart shop advised me to do. And uh, and then I suppose I'm going to go out and walk around on Queen's <laughs> Amsterdam, Day, which is incredibly <laughs> chaotic and disgusting, and uh, probably the worst possible place to take them. The fuck. That's what face. Ever consumed a psychedelic truffle. You can't really get these in the United States, as far as I know. It's actually much less than Odita, but mushroom doesn't seem like very much at all. So what do they do to you? Okay. I'm really interested now. I've never seen these before. Close your mouth, Hamilton. Jeez, Dan's game. There you go. The philosopher's st good one. Twenty four hours earlier. Pippi Jam. I arrived in Amsterdam. Doubtlessly one of the sickest places on earth to get blazed on dank nugs. Dank oh my god. This guy's a scientist, by the way. But my interest is not <laughs> side grip dude to blazing dank nugs. <laughs> Amsterdam is fertile ground for all manner of <laughs> Dank nugs. substance. Oh, damn. This editing, dude. <laughs> I came here to find the Psilocybe Tampanensis Sclerotium, or Philosopher's Stone Truffle. The fuck? It was not until the infamous mushroom ban of 2008 that the psychedelic sclerotium gained widespread popularity due to the fact that its effects and chemical composition are almost indistinguishable from the psilocybin mushroom. Oh. Mushrooms were once completely- Wait, why does everyone say that word differently? Psilocybin, psilocybin, psilocybin. Just fucking pick one way to say it and just I, I don't get it. I really don't. Since the early 90s, there is no like, I don't know. World in the <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that. Psychedelic mushroom growing techniques. But everything changed in 2008 when the Dutch government changed. banned psilocybin containing mushrooms, responding to a number of highly Accents? No, they're all American. That's why I was referring to it. There is no accents involved otherwise I wouldn't be mentioning it. Publicized deaths, misguidedly blamed on the innocent fungus. Truffles escaped the ban unscathed and hold a place inside the hearts of all true Dutch. I am here to learn about true how Dutch. strange protuberances are cultivated and why they have not been banned. There are no better people to consult than the Truffle Brothers. <laughs> the world's leading <laughs> The Truffle Brothers? Of psychedelic oh man, here we go. I visited the brothers' farm in Hauser's Vaudedorp, formerly the second largest mushroom farm in the Netherlands. Second largest? Having survived the mushroom ban, the Truffle brothers now dominate the psilocybin-containing fungus industry. 
I sat down with Morad and What Oli the fuck? To discuss the secrets Damn. of the Philosopher's Stone. Uh, first of all, my name is uh, Ali. Next to my and uh, next to me is uh, sitting my brother uh, Murad. We are, in fact, the, the known as the Truffle Brothers. <laughs> You're here at the farm of uh, Magic Truffles. I already get it. These guys are gonna be foreheads. Uh, I know produce, it. Uh, you can already uh, tell. Sclerosia, also known as Magic Truffles. And how did this company get started? No, oh, I fucking lost. Interesting story. <laughs> Long story. <laughs> that started somewhere around 1993, 94, I guess. I learned mushroom growing in Belgium. Mushrooms for eating normal white button mushrooms. That was my occupation before I started with these mushrooms. And uh, so I still I don't know what a truffle is. Network in that area. In Am that I area. fucking Pepega? Hold on. Field. And one day a friend of mine comes up to me and says, look, what I, what I found, uh, he shows me uh, a Petri dish with spots. Oh! That's interesting. What kind of mushroom is it? He said, well, it's... It's just, all right. That makes sense. And I never heard of it. So I took a closer look. I went to a friend of mine who owned a laboratory, a mycological laboratory. And asked him, can we do something with these pores? He said, well, let's give it a try. <laughs> and after two weeks, there was one mushroom in the aquarium. But it oh, dude, animal. can we just get to the part where he does them? Big <laughs> this, this, this tall. <laughs> we were looking at it. I said, okay, let's, uh, let's harvest the thing. <laughs> I don't really care. You know, hot take, I don't really care for the lore of the fucking Truffles Brothers. Like, look at them, right? They don't really need an introduction. They sell psychedelic truffles. <laughs> All right, they bypassed the law. They got a loophole. I get it. It was a side product in that time. Wrap it up, honest. Wrap it up, dude. To better understand the prohibition of the sacred mushroom, I go to meet criminal lawyer Karem Kanatan, who explained the nuances of Dutch drug law. Okay, well, first of all, we have what, like many countries, we have the class A drugs and class <coughs> B drugs. So that's, that's not different from any other countries. So we have a list of drugs that are illegal to buy it, to use it. Turn off my webcam it, for a second. Um, bring it over the border, etc. It's completely illegal. Then we have a small portion of drugs. In, in, in Holland, we call it soft drugs, where you have weed and the hashis and the joints. <coughs> Joints because that's we, we smoke joints. Oh my that's, eyes. Uh, that's a correct correct term, but uh, inside grip, yes. Have, which uh, is called a like a tolerance policy All right. by the Dutch government, and they have on paper. Dude, I was way too sober for this shit. Doesn't uh, isn't bigger than this so and so so much. Um, then it's allowed to have it. It's allowed to smoke it, and it's. Oh, my webcam isn't on, is it? Oh no, it is. Okay, so we're good. Up until around two thousand seven it was okay to use the magic mushrooms. These were the salad days for mushrooms, but a series of unfortunate incidents where mentally ill tourists hurt themselves turned politicians against the sacred mushroom, and they began to legislate a ban. That's fucked up. <coughs> Though there had been scattered mushroom incidents in Amsterdam for decades, it was not until the death of a 17-year-old French student named Gael Karoff that lawmakers... Mamma mia, Mario is out of his shrooms, god damn it. ...consumption of psychedelic mushrooms. Toen uh, is a meisje achter dat orgel gaan zitten. Heeft daar een uh, stukje gespeeld. Is what is this lore? Twee jongens er achteraan. En toen een kwartier later kwam de jongens uh, terug. En uh, lijkt bleek uiteraard. Ma fille était une élève brillante à l'école. What the fuck? After the incident with Gael, others followed. Why'd they show a piano? Because they said she was playing the piano and because she was on psilocybin mushrooms and then she stood up and walked outside and killed herself. Under the influence of mushrooms, ritualistically sacrificed... Psilocybin wouldn't do that, even if it's a bad trip. ...in order to free the dog's mind from its corporeal shackles. That's Monk W. ...the a melding from Stads Toezicht, who the man besmeurt with blood with his hond in the bush saw sitting. The man blijkt his hond with a mess and a schaar to have vermoord. He said, well, I was on, on mushrooms. He had a psychosis. And he had, it had nothing to do with mushrooms. He wasn't even close to mushrooms. 
since these products are legal in this country, it's very easy to hide yourself behind it. <laughs> what the fuck? This is some Monka W shit! Horizon, protesters swarmed the parliament building, armed with super soakers filled with psychedelic mushroom spores, which they used to spray the surrounding parks and lawns. They demanded their right to consume mushrooms, but parliament ruled in favor of the ban. They had super soakers with psilocybin spores in them. Why haven't I thought about that? Let's fucking do that. I want to do that here for no reason. Just run into like a Times Square after the coronavirus for this super soaker. Hey guys, what's up? Do it on stream. Dude, that's such a good idea. That's a great idea. I should do that shit. Oh man, that'd be so good. And all of these different uh, genus and species. Yeah, well, part of them God already, damn, dude. already on, uh, on it, but especially this list from, from, from here, uh, the uh, magic mushroom list. And it says here that the magic mushrooms are mushrooms who have by nature <coughs> uh, these and these uh, active uh, ingredients. And then all these species um, uh, are on the list. The law changed in 2008, 1st of December 2008. Sad day, the saddest day of my life. How much time did they give you after the ban to get rid of your stock of mushrooms? <laughs> ten days. <laughs> well, ten days to clear. <laughs> ten days, Pepe left. Growing houses, all the equipment, and so on. And you were saying all these other different bans have been given enormous amounts of time, years before they have to. Ming, Ming farms, for instance, they got the uh, they got ten years to, uh, to to change the plans. Ten years. Ten years. Yeah. Ten years versus ten days. Ten days? God <laughs> damn. <laughs> How did you Imagine get mushrooms? that was the easiest part. Because <laughs> people were lined up here. <laughs> my, the last mushrooms, the last mushrooms. Despite the chemical and biological similarity to the mushroom, Parliament decided not to ban the magic truffle. When the law changed in 2008, we just continued with the truffles that we were already growing in that time. So what is a truffle? This is all just is lore. From a mushroom. Let's call it a parking lot for nutrients and moisture. Like all organisms, a fungus seeks to reproduce, but environmental conditions are not always ideal to do so. If the substrate is too dry, cold, hot, or poor in nutrients, the mycelium will Grimoire lore for drugs, honestly. A clump of globular fungus called a sclerotium. These hard structures are able to survive in harsh environmental conditions until the time is right to send forth mushrooms. I'm sorry, what? Offered to give me a guided tour the sclerotium. Of the sclerotium cultivation facilities. Man, they're harvesting some sclerotiums. That's the, uh, the dirty side where all raw materials come in. Dude, I just want to know, like, seed substrate is sterilized in an industrial. It's one fat sheep, yeah, dude. To kill opportunistic bacteria and fungi, which are equally eager to consume the bags of warm, moist nutrients. Then the bags are inoculated with a liquid culture of mycelium. This is a class 100 clean room. That means that only 100 particles of zero points. Zero 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 nine six micron. Look at how Make. look how fucking dapper he is. I'm sorry, but like, look at this shit. Only Hamilton Morris will have like this like uh, fashionable dapper shit walking into a laboratory that facilitates like scrotiums. <laughs> zero point zero 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 nine six micron may be present in one cubic feet of air. I swear, scuff Doctor Who. Room. Is class 10, Earlier we were calling him Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> so 10,000 particles may appear in a cubic foot of air. Impressive. If you do everything like your laboratory work and you're growing under one roof, you get a cross contamination somewhere, somehow. And that risk was so big that we looked for a, a, a proper building with at least two separate departments. Then the bags are trained. Okay, I have a. Listen. Every episode, his legs either get longer or his sh uh, coats get shorter. Because, like, 
it's one or the other, right? I'm pushing towards the latter, but like the like the the first episode of the, the HIV one where he did the HIV medicine, I swear his coat was down to here, right? It was the same coat. Now it's I, like I, that's just me. He's getting taller, or the coat's getting shorter. I don't know which one it is, but I don't think anyone else has picked up on this shit. I'm on that shit though. How do you prevent the growth of the mushrooms? By controlling the temperature and the yeah. microclimate in the bag. Uh, the microclimate in the bag is not suitable for fortification, for, for formation of mushrooms. The final stage is the nursery, where the bags are kept in darkness for as many as five months before the sclerotia are mature. And what is the capacity of this plant at the moment? <laughs> the full capacity. Uh, if we would work 24 hours a day in three shifts, 18,000 tons per year. Something like that, yeah. 18,000 tons. Yes. Yeah. But I think that Sclerotia took over the mushroom Dude. market one on one <laughs> yeah. by now. By Wrap it up. Distributor, All right. Specializing in peyote cacti. <laughs> okay, listen, I'm sorry, but how deep does this fucking rabbit hole go? I, I clicked on this video. I want to see Hamilton acquire these psychedelic well, truffles and consume them and then tell the viewer what they're like. How deep does this fucking rabbit hole go where he's like, I'm going to go to this store on this day and talk to him, and then I'm going to go here and buy a fucking cactus. He's like, this man is too fat. He needs to lose weight. Yeah, dude, look how fat he is. He needs to exercise. He needs to lose weight, dude. We finally made it to the shop, and not a minute too soon as the hordes of truffle-hungry Dutch waited eagerly for their Queen's Day delights. That guy's afro! Holy shit! Did, did, wait, did that sign say what I think it did? Sal they're selling salvia! and a f That's like... <laughs> magic mushrooms and salvia! <laughs> What a combo! Damn, Pepe Jam though. Chills and thrills was not the truffle theme park I was expecting, but I knew the real ride would come later. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I would like to buy some P Temple. I'm good. Fucking Hamilton. Thank you. The truffles require no preparation, and though the Truffle Brothers recommended a truffle-based milkshake, I chose to take them raw so that I could savor their essences. Hamilton takes it raw. God damn it. That's not bad at all. That's kind of good. Close your fucking mouth, Hamilton. Dan's game. It has almost a sour aftertaste, but sour is like... Sour is the last taste I would associate uh, with the truffle. <laughs> it's like chicken? It does. Oh shit. Do you want some truffle crumbs? <laughs> Scarf them down. Forehead. Tastes pretty darn. Fucking Hamilton. A wet nut. A wet nut. 